Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the class of International Trade Theory, Econ 446. I'm Yasser Saeed and today we are going to study economies of scale, imperfect competition and international trade. So far what we have already covered is the types of economies of scale and uh, basically there are uh, two types of economies of scale the in external economies of scale and internal economies of scale and we have covered that then we have partially covered uh, the monopoly a type of imperfect competition that is monopoly and uh, oligopoly is uh, uh, somewhat identical to monopoly then uh, today we are going to uh, study uh, monopolistic competition and we are going to compare the monopolistic competition and how trade happens when we have uh, such type of competition then we are going to cover inter-industry trade and intra-industry trade then we will shed some light on dumping why dumping happens what type of dumping can exist and finally the external economies of scale and its relationship to the international trade. <coughs> so let's talk about the monopolistic competition. It is a, uh, it is a model of imperfect competitive industry uh, which is based on two assumptions. The first assumption is that each firm can differentiate its product from the product of competitor. And uh, the second assumption is that each firm ignore the impact that changes in, in the price will have on the prices that competitors set. Even though each firm faces competition, it behaves as if it were a monopolist. So the bas basic idea of uh, monopolistic competition is that uh, the firm is in competition but it considers itself as a, a person in monopoly why does this happen so basically uh, it happens because of the product differentiation the product offered by a monopolistic competitor is slightly different from that of uh, the other competitors if you look at the assumption of uh, perfect competition one of the assumption of perfect competition is the product uh, uh, the product sold in the market is homogene homogeneous that is basically identical the market considers the products to be identical but in a monopolistic competition the product is not necessarily identical uh, if we have examples of such types of market we may look at the soap industry which produces soap and each soap has its own name but uh, basically soap performs the same function but they are advertised differently so monopolistic competition offers the same product but tries to differentiate it from the other product and this enables the firm to charge differently if you look at the second assumption each firms ignore the impact of changes in the prices of other firms why because it does not consider its product equal to their product it can differentiate the price from its competitors there are two expectations from a firm in monopoly and uh, one of those expectation is that firms uh, are able to sell more as total sales in the industry increases and as price charged by the rival increases so based on these two changes based on these two variables the firm sales uh, are expected uh, to increase why uh, for the first thing to sell more as total sales in the industry increase why because uh, it has uh, a, a certain share in the market it has 10 percent share in the market so if the market uh, quantity rises the quantity produced or sold by this individual firm also rises then if the price charged by its rival increases 
if its uh, competitor increase the price his good is considered to be somewhat a substitute good and uh, the sale of uh, the goods produced by this competitor may also increase then there is a second expectation from a firm under uh, monopolistic competition that is uh, to sell less as the number of firms in the industry decrease and as its prices increase see uh, it is somewhat the opposite of the first one to sell less as the number of firms in the industry increase when there are more and more firms in the industry then his market share is going to decline and thus uh, the competitor is not uh, able to sell more of his product again if the compete if the uh, producer the firm increases its price then demand uh, should definitely decrease for this competitive firm so these two things are expected from a firm under uh, monop uh, monopolistic competition then we can represent these two concepts uh, mathematically and equation and the mathematical equation uh, is uh, represented as q is equal to s uh, then in whole bracket 1 over n minus b p minus p dash and then bracket close q represents the individual firms uh, sales the output that it is producing as is the total sales of the industry and uh, n shows the number of firms so if you look at the equation when n increases uh, overall value of q needs to be decreased so number of firms increasing cost the output or output or the sales to decrease in a monopolistic firm then b is a constant term representing the responsiveness of firm sales to its price if the price of the firm change from uh, the average price in the market how much should the demand change so this is captured by the constant term b p is a price charge by the firm itself and uh, p dash represents the average prices charged by the competitors so basically this is the difference in his price as compared to the market price if his price is higher than the market price then q will decline if his price is lower than the market price then q is expected to rise to make the model easier to understand we assume that all the firms face the same demand function and have the same cost function so basically the firms uh, face the same market demand curve and uh, their cost is identical to all other firms in the market firms are identical in cost structures thus in equilibrium all firms should charge the same price p and that should equal to p there should be no difference in the price and then when they are in equilibrium q is equal to sales by n plus 0 y equals to 0 because p minus p dash is equal to 0 and the whole term uh, con converts to 0 therefore uh, q is uh, equal to s or n so this is the simplification of the model then the average cost is equal to total cost divided by q and again uh, we derived it uh, in the previous lecture that is uh, total cost includes a fixed cost and a variable cost so f by q that is the fixed cost divided by quantity gives us average fixed cost plus c which gives us uh, the average variable cost and it also equals to the uh, marginal cost whenever we try to find the marginal cost that will equal to the small c so uh, again shortening this equation we get f into n by s plus c this is our uh, cost equation average cost equation
uh, average cost is equal to F bracket n by S plus C. This is what we have derived. And let us explain the equation as well as the number of firms n in the industry increase the average cost increase for each firm because each produces less look at uh, the n n is in direct proportional with the average cost so number of firm increases will cause the average cost to increase why because each firm is producing lesser quantity than before as total sales s of the industry increase what happens when sales increase the average cost is going to decrease for each firm as uh, it produces more because the average fixed cost is uh, shortening with each and every passage of uh, time with average each and every quantity that is being produced let us understand this relationship graphically as well the number of firms in a monopolistically competitive market and the prices they charge are determined by two relationships on one side, uh, the more firms there are, the more intensity, uh, intensely they compete, and hence the lower is the industry price. And uh, then again, this relationship is represented by PP. On the other side, the more firms there are, less of each firm sells, therefore the higher is uh, the average cost. The relationship is uh, represented by the curve CC. If price exceeds average cost, that is, uh, if the PP curve is above the CC curve, the industry will uh, be making profit and additional firms will enter this industry. But then again, if the price is, is less than the average cost, the industry will uh, incur losses and firm will leave the industry. So the equilibrium price and uh, the number of firms occur when price equals to the average cost at the intersection where the two meets the pp curve and the cc curve are equal or we may say that uh, at point e so at this point uh, both the uh, curves are at equilibrium if a monopolistic firm uh, have a linear demand function then the relationship between the price and the quantity may be represented as q is equal to a minus bp whereas a is the uh, a is the intercept term and b is the slope term and both of a both of these very both of these uh, are constant a and b both are constant and the marginal revenue may be represented as uh, MR is equal to P minus QB. How we find marginal revenue in such scenario, we have to find uh, or convert the first equation in terms of P, then multiply it, it by Q, uh, that gives us revenue. Then we find the relative change of PQ with respect to Q, and we get this marginal revenue equation, that is P minus Q over B. When firm maximizes its profit, they should produce until marginal revenue is not greater or less than the marginal cost. So the first condition for profit maximization, and that is true for all firms, whether it is a perfect competition, whether it is a monopoly, or it may be a monopolistic competition. This rule is same for all types of competition, and that is that marginal revenue should always equal to marginal cost and uh, same is true here so marginal revenue must equal to the marginal cost and we know the marginal cost that is equal to small c so marginal revenue is equal to p minus q over b that is basically marginal revenue and the right hand side that is small c that is the marginal cost this is the equation that we uh, discussed earlier and uh, we are going to relate it to our uh, linear demand function how, how these two can be related to each other so uh, basically what we are going to do we are opening the outer uh, brackets and uh, so we get the s over n minus sb into p minus p bar 
and then further we multiply the SB uh, with the inner bracket and open that bracket as well so we get S over N plus S uh, BP minus S BP bar now we uh, consider S over N plus S over BP as uh, A and S B as, mm, as the value of B and we get the same uh, equation the same linear demand equation q is equal to a minus bp uh, so this is how we can relate the two equations with each other now we are uh, combining the two relationship uh, this is our earlier relationship the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost and uh, we replace b with the value sb that is taken from the second equation and then further uh, we reshuffle the equation to make it as p is equal to c plus q or sb and again we replace the value of q with s or n from the uh, earlier equation this gives us p is equal to c plus 1 or n multiplied by b so what we have basically done is derived equation which can in interpret the impact of uh, number of firms on the price level so as the number of firms n in the industry increase the price that each firm charges decrease because of increased competition and again you see that n is in the denominator whenever we increase something in the denominator the numerator value uh, or, or the uh, other value uh, will increase the price value will increase uh, with any change in n at some number of firms the price that firm charge will decrease in n matches the average cost that the firm pay um, which again is an increase in the end when the industry has this number of firms each firm will earn revenue that exactly offsets all cost including the opportunity cost and the prices will match the average cost now this means that the number uh, this number is uh, the equilibrium number of firms in the industry this will control the total number of firms in the industry below which uh we will have losses in the industry firms will exit and above this uh, specific equilibrium uh, there will be uh, profit in the industry and firms will try to enter so because firms have no incentive or tendency to enter or exit in the industry at this point we consider this to be uh, an equilibrium If the number of firms is greater than or less than the equilibrium, the firms have an incentive to exit or enter the industry. This is what we have uh, said earlier. So the basic condition for uh, the entry or exit is that prices uh, have uh, prices are greater than the average cost, then firms will tend to uh, enter the market. But if prices are less than the average cost, then firms tend to exit the market. because the trade increases the market size trade is predicted to decrease the average cost in an industry and uh, described by the monopolistic competition industry sales increase with trade leading to decrease average cost uh, again from the same equation ac is equal to f into n over s plus c and because trade increases the variety of goods that consumer can buy under monopolistic competition, it increases the welfare of the consumers. Because the average cost decrease, consumers can also benefit from a decrease. Again, we can understand this uh, concept graphically. An increase in the size of market allows each firm other things equal to produce more uh, and thus have lower average cost this is represented by the downward shift from cc1 to cc2 
and the result is simultaneous increase in the number of firms and hence in the variety of good available and fall in the price of each uh, will happen in such situations so uh, this is how we can explain it graphically here is an interesting conclusion that we have uh, derived from this discussion so far that is the number of firms in new international industry is predicted to increase relative to each national market now this is not clear whether the new firms will be in the current mark uh, in the uh, domestic market or these new firms will be created in the foreign market but this is uh, understood we understand that uh, the total number of firms will increase in the overall uh, market the international market so it can be in any of these two countries so let us just represent what uh, we have understood in uh, this hypothetical example and we have domestic market and foreign market and the data for these two is given to us but uh, we do not know where the firms uh, will exit in this scenario uh, when the the trade integrates then the total sales in the integrated market is equal to 25 lakh and the individual sale that is 16 in the foreign market and 9 lakh in the uh, domestic market so that sale is identical but the total number of firms will decline and instead of having 8 plus 6 uh, equal to 14 firms we are now having 10 firms and so is the sale uh, per firm sale per firm will increase because uh, as we have uh, earlier suggested in the discussion that when uh, now when certain firms exit the market the market share of individual firm increase so here the overall share of uh, an individual firm has increased in the market selling more as compared to uh, when there were many firms in the market and again uh, when they are producing more the average cost has declined and it has declined to the level that uh, uh, it is less than what was before in the individual markets and so should be the prices prices will also decline uh, uh, average cost and price have declined because they both uh, are identical uh, in the equation so this is our discussion on the uh, monopolistic competition and how uh, it impacts the trade how it uh, consequence uh, consequently results uh, in the trade uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this lecture if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask